Willkommen, liebe Zuschauer. Welcome, dear guests, to the Panorama Film Studio. Today we're talking about early sexualization. Who wants it, what is it supposed to do, and foremost, where does it even come from? Our studio guests are history professor Michael Vogt and Dr. Claudia Haunit. Panorama Film stands for ethically and morally high-quality films. Therefore, it was no easy task to reveal all the facts, what has happened, and the intolerable practices surrounding this topic as it is done in this documentary. Even simply speaking of various happenings, so says Ivo Sazek, creator and director of this film, borders on immorality. But since we had the impression that all of this will push itself through on a global level, if it is not relentlessly revealed in a timely manner, Panorama Film chose this uncensored publication. So we hope you don't have fun watching this film. Buckle up and make your own opinion. But whoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Whoever teaches man holds power over them. Our children stand under an ever-expanding power influenced by educational directors, teachers and, as of late, sexual educators from the outside. What is their source? If you seek, you will find. By the convincing words and deeds of Jesus, a new era had started. Do today's teachers even know what they're doing when they, against all of his holy warnings, sexually educate children from the youngest age and sexually stimulate them, in short, undergo early sexualization? Are the up-and-coming sex experts more competent than Jesus of Nazareth? Were you, dear viewer, ever even told about the global efforts to sexualize our children at the earliest ages? Once again, we're supposed to break a final taboo. Sexual contact with children, with underage persons, is supposed to be legalized and promoted. Our hearts almost stop beating when we read of the newest plans and intentions of the highest acclaimed sex educators. Leading educators like Helmut Kentler teach that the current child protection is, in reality, child hostility. He makes the outrageous claim, sex with children isn't abuse, but it's the child's right. The right of the child to sexual satisfaction. True child protection would be the protection of self-determination sexually. They are obviously camouflaging child abuse as education. Adults should speak with their children about porn. It's something the germ educational scientist Carla Etchenberg states. She even demands, along with the Swiss Socialist Party, Schweizer Jungsozialisten, the integration of pornography in the classroom. Such demands, so says the European anti-genocide movement, must be fought with a law that is currently in effect, severely and without compromise. Pornography, Swiss Criminal Code, Article 197. First, any person who offers, shows, passes on or makes accessible to a person who is under the age of 16 pornographic documents, sound or visual recordings, depictions or other articles of a similar nature, pornographic representations or broadcasts, any of the same on radio or television shall be liable to a custodial sentence not exceeding three years or to a monetary penalty. Second, any person who exhibits in public articles or representations as described in paragraph one or above or shows or 
otherwise offers the same unsolicited to others shall be liable to a fine. Also, children should be safeguarded from pornographic products and everyone kept safe from taking in images of sexual content against their will. See also Article 358, an order on television services from March 25th, 1992, Article 18a, Paragraph 1. The Child Rights Movement AGB also demands that this principle consequently be applied to cell phone distributors because practically every child has a cell phone in their pocket. The following excerpts are from the foundational thesis of education and schooling of the Competence Center of Sexual Education and Schooling at the Swiss University, PHZ and state The child is a sexual being. Foundational for sexual education is the definition of mankind as a sexual being in need of education or, in other words, affirming children and youths as sexual beings. But even this first, fundamentally twisted conclusion opens the door for pedophiles. Because in other words it means, as long as the child likes it, it is all legitimate. Here an example out of the foundational thesis and the website of the Competence Center. Age 4 through 5 years. The kindergarten level is depicted as follows. Doctor games, lustful self-realization, self-stimulation, that means orgasm-like reactions are of interest, also role-playing games, including families with two fathers or two mothers, as well as kissing, sexual intercourse, erotic interest in the own parents, open displays of nudity in genital games, experiences first deep friendships and relationships. This results in the following focal point in the classroom. A. Naming body parts, including genitals. B. Experiencing your body in a playful way, including sexual stimulation. C. Friendly relationships, setting boundaries, respecting your own privacy and that of others. D. Procreation, how the sexual act is done so that a child is created. And this, dear viewers, with four through five-year-olds. Age, six through twelve years, activities with same age peers, devaluation and or rejection of the opposite sex, gender stereotypical behavior, possibly exaggerated, provocative and or aggressive behavior towards the opposite sex, breaking taboos, possibly interest and erotic attraction toward the same sex, and when are you old enough to fuck? This results in the following curriculum. Sexuality and language, curse words, an interview with such external sex educators currently in school showed that they give every child, no matter what age, precise information about, for instance, what ass-fucking, squirting off and much worse if the child has heard such terms and not understood them. Procreation, pregnancy and birth, different forms of friendships, relationships and forms of life. This is where they funnel all the newly defined abnormalities into the children as normal. And more importantly, everything that was formerly normal is declared abnormal and illegal. Gender roles, new definitions, for instance, the working mother, the dad at the stove, sexual orientation, everything goes as long as it's fun. The first menstruation, the first ejaculation, HIV, AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases, sexual molestation, violence, masturbation, primarily boys, but also girls, and this as completely normal, important even. Age 12 through 16 years. Social changes, this means the developing independence and breaking away from the parents' household, rising interest in the detailed knowledge of sexual practices, possibly conscious contact with pornography, how many positions are there for sex and which are the best, does swallowing sperm make you fat, 
this is where we end our listing for moral reasons. The curriculum is in any case aimed directly at all the other gossip of children and youth, that lastly absolutely every vulgarity is in everyone's head. Here is an example from the thesis and the website of the Competence Center. Developmental step self-stimulation meaning creating organism-like reactions, behavior, discovering body regions as a source of new lust feelings, conscious repeated manipulation of body parts, including genitals, playful discovery of generals through role-playing like father-mother games, families with two mothers, two fathers, one parent being in love, sexual intercourse, or through doctor games, also discovering other bodies, satisfying the natural curiosity. At the same time, the Socialist Party Jungsozialist Newso, which has ties to better fields, is working on a position paper which calls for Sosestanivalese a new way of handling the topic of pornography. In this they state, 10 to 12 year olds should already watch porn in sex adolescence. Although this demand initially elicited indignation among school officials, we'll just have to wait and see how long such indignation can withstand steady pressure from the Yuso. Even in the name of AIDS information, child rights or sexual orientation of schools, new curricula are being prepared Europe-wide that make the early sex ed and early sexualization of children mandatory content. Professor Vogt, how did we get to the point of this internationally widespread sexual education ideology? Did it just happen overnight? No, of course not. It was implemented in the USA in 1939 by the most persistent work of the sexologist Alfred C. Kinsey. Alfred Kinsey was, if I remember correctly, repeatedly called the most important sexologist of the 20th century. Do you share the same opinion? I would not exactly call him the most important sexologist for the reasons we will still discuss, but surely the most influential factor of the so-called sexual opinion development of society. Most all of the neurosexual education programs are based on the work of Kinsey. Dr. Haunit, you are a practicing doctor. Which of the many of Kinsey's teachings would you, from your viewpoint, want to most discuss? With his opinion that anything goes, of course, this so-called modern thinking is one that Kinsey coined for sex and sexuality. In practice, it has been shown that this is an extremely dangerous idea, because it has led to innumerable criminal acts, and still does. Kinsey's main work shows that black on white. It concerns the two-volume Kinsey report. Firstly, sexual behavior of the male, and secondly, sexual behavior of the female. With these works, Dr. Sex, as he was called, actually influenced the sexual thinking of almost the whole world. Obviously a man whose words hold power over many nations. A man whose teaching is only now beginning to bear fruit. Kinsey was the father of sexual free thinking. But who exactly was Kinsey? No question could currently be more important than this, because Kinsey's words and teachings have such worldwide effects as those of Jesus Christ, except that they are completely against the latter. So which of the two is more trustworthy? We know the words and works of Jesus Christ, which led to a whole new measure of time. But what exactly are the words and works of Kinsey? Our studio guests and a few short clips will help us with our search. Over the course of his life, Kinsey collected over 18,500 case studies with a preference for underage youths in order to bring this into society. Kinsey's highest goal was sexual variety, yet he called himself a conservative scientist. In 1997, the German magazine Der Spiegel published a piece about the incredible secret life of Kinsey. The Kinsey biography by James Jones proves that the sexologist Kinsey let his homosexual and sadomasochistic side run rampant. It contains reports of Kinsey's time as a Boy Scout. 
living out his voyeuristic and exhibitionistic character unrestrained. After Kinsey left his Christian home with deep hate, he collected co-workers in order to scientifically study the sexual behavior of people, but most predominantly that of unraid children. Each one of his workers had to completely reveal their sexual life and behavior. And in a secret room in his house, Kinsey regularly hosted group sex games with his workers and chosen guests. He even forced his own wife to participate. Kinsey had a professional camera team film homosexual, heterosexual and sadomasochistic scenes. In spite of the pressure that made them sick, his workers complied out of fear for their careers. People working for Kinsey were, for instance, Clyde Martin, who had no formal training in statistics. And yet he was in charge of the statistical analysis of all data. The whole deal was even financed by the Rockefeller Foundation. Later on, they repeatedly stated that they demanded a professional statistician. But Kinsey could not be budged. Kinsey himself suffered from extreme sadomasochism. He supposedly undertook brutal and incredibly painful manipulations on his own genitals over and over again. Besides his homosexual relationships to his co-workers like Pomeroy and Martin, he also was a part of the homosexual scene in Chicago. Kinsey created intense questionnaires for his scientific studies. By reading these, it becomes clear that Kinsey was convinced that every person at some point or other had practiced perversion, had an affair or other brutal sadistic experiences. Also, that everyone at some point in their life had sexual experiences with someone of the same sex, with the animals or with children. There was no room in his questionnaires for the person taking it to circumvent such monstrosities. And if they at some point admitted to something of the like, Kinsey had them in his grip. Even though Kinsey stated that his sex research results were taken from a broad majority, he generally limited himself to questioning prostitutes, homosexuals, prison inmates and people from the underworld, as he called it. Kinsey was therefore a proven statistic cheater. Although Kinsey's sexual research was intended for marital preparation counseling, they contained nothing about themes like pregnancy, birth and nursing babies, which would have definitely belonged there. On the bottom line, Kinsey was sexually ill, a man who manipulatively and aggressively abused his professional authority as a teacher. When Kinsey tried in the 40s to make his more than 350 questions about sexual behavior public, he had a very hard time reaching normal people. It was much easier to get data from people living more unconventionally. And this is how it resulted in the deceptive picture that 95% of all Americans were supposedly sexual derelicts. 69% were regular visitors of prostitutes, 37% had homosexual experiences, and 17% of U.S. farmers had supposedly had sex with animals. It was first in 1981 that media expert Dr. Judith Reisman was able to uncover these grave methodical faults in Kinsey's work. What was interesting is the fact that a great part of Kinsey's data stemmed from pedophiles, meaning from criminal child molesters. So they didn't interview the general population, but pedophiles. And yet, to this day, Kinsey's work is still the most essential so-called scientific foundation of sexual research worldwide. Even the foundational thesis of sexual education and schooling, which the Swiss Lehrplan 21 builds upon, states under the title primary school that the description of a phase of childhood in which sexuality is at rest has empirically been proven to be wrong. Empirically means after experimentation. 
but it's exactly Kinsey's collection of experiments that Lapland 21 bases itself on, just like almost all other sex education programs worldwide. The most school officials have no idea what they're basing themselves on. That's when you're young, and it's just too early, I think. In all honesty, that sounds ridiculous. We have two children our own, the little guy is three, the big isn't even five yet, and I seriously can't think of what he would need that for. We think it's absolutely wrong. I'm not for that. That has to be a joke. I don't think it's a good thing, because, well, I mean, they're only four years old. What can they even do with that and such? It doesn't do anything for them at all. That's not even an issue at that age, or for four and six-year-olds in kindergarten. That's a bit early, I'd say. You said four years old? No, I don't think that's good. No, I don't think that's okay. For us in any case, that's out of question. I also don't think it's good that young kids are confronted with sexuality. I don't think that's okay. Four? They want to learn and, and play and, and be a kid? <laughs> They've got other things on their minds. I mean, that's acclimating them for that. Well, that's just impossible. No, I don't want that at all, that they educate them about that so early. Not at all. I'm completely against In kindergarten already, I think that's horrible. That's stupid. Seriously. Simply too early. That doesn't belong to kids. A child should play. A child should play outside and, you know, not think about such things. Well, I can't even picture it. That's totally abnormal. It's inhuman. Impossible. Well, that's really bad. There are probably people who use that opportunity to get some. I've never thought of that. That would be the worst thing I could ever imagine. It shocks me to hear that. That sounds pretty weird. In no way is that good. But if I put my kid in kindergarten and knew that, uh, I would be so mad, but I don't know what I'd do. Bad, not good. Excuse me? That's too crass. No, no, now I think even less of it. To touch a child like that, one that maybe can't even walk yet, that's where I draw the line. That gives me goosebumps. No, I don't think that's good. No, uh, then I'm totally against it. That's totally idiocity, such a study. Even if I use my normal everyday mindset for the whole topic, I know uh, it's just stupidity. As the parents with kids, they know how children develop. I don't have to motivate a child to sexuality. In Sexual Behavior of the Human Male, Kinsey declares that his book only contains data from 5,300 Caucasian men and boys, although he supposedly held the data from 6,300 male persons. Alan Wallace, one of the USA's most renowned statisticians, analyzed this claim and came to the conclusion that the book only contained 4,120 persons. And it was also missing the exact age, structure and sexual orientation of the subjects. Over and over Kinsey claimed to have data representing the US population of the 1940s. But a closer look toward that book Sexual Behavior of the Male merely contained data from not representative and part very suspicious subcultures. Approximately 1,400 criminals from prisons in various U.S. states. Many of them were in for child molestation. Dr. Judith Reisman suspected 630 homosexual men. 200 so-called sexual psychopaths were found. Also 329 criminals sentenced for other various crimes. And also at least 317 male children between the ages of 2 months and 15 years who were abused sexually, although they suspected more. There were 350 students with odd behavior. And last but not least, there was a person group of criminals that Kinsey simply declared to be the underworld.
a clear case of lies and propaganda by cheating statistics. When Kinsey was repeatedly criticized for this, he said that this perception was based on the old opinion that criminals were different than the rest of the population. Well, I don't think that's good at all. That they practically base the principle on some extreme cases. I don't think anything of that really. Yeah, that's sick. So, why do they ask groups like that? That's not an average. That's just weird. More than impossible, yes, I think so too. I think a lot of people would be upset if they knew something like that. Then they would give completely different answers if they knew that they had such a bad history or a bad life beforehand. That's just terrifying. But that they limit these interviews to uh, specific groups, that's just... That doesn't mirror the opinion of the whole at all. I can't make myself equal to a pedophile. That somewhat surprises me. The statistics that there is no difference, hmm, that raise the question of whether this concept can work for prevention. No, they shouldn't have been asked at all. Well, I just can't imagine it, because those people are sick. And the general population isn't sick. That's the problem with interviews. You can put anything into a person's mouth, or I don't think a lot of this. I don't think that's okay that they use their opinions. But those just, they're not competent people. But asking those who actually hurt children or other people with that topic, asking them, I don't know if it makes sense, you know, or if it even fits into the topic. I mean, those are sick people. They shouldn't be in public anyway. With, with that sickness to, to the moon, that's where they belong. I would definitely make a stand, because that's just not good. It's not just my problem, it's our problem. They're our children. They're the next generation. They're our future. In any case, you have to do something about it. Just sitting around at home watching TV saying, yeah, they'll take care of itself. It will not take care of itself. You have to react quickly and do something about it, so it doesn't come to that. That's my opinion. Decline, I suppose. Forbid it. Whoever touches a child like that should legally be punished very highly and as fast as possible. Possibly even sentenced. Like, not out on peril or whatnot, but simply, well, they just have to be taken out of traffic. I think uh, parents have to stand together and defend themselves. That's just not acceptable. It's really horrible. Then I'll just take them out of school for a while. Simple. I won't have that. More information for children. And as a nation, we have to make sure something like that doesn't happen. And of course, we ourselves have to do something about it and make sure that those people don't touch the children sexually or whatever. I just couldn't let that happen. I have a little girl of my own. I wouldn't let that happen. That's not okay. And not listen to their opinions in the first place. I think it's a seriously bad thing. I wouldn't allow my kid to do that. You just have to be against something like this. I mean, this is where we, the people, have to really stand together and go against something like this, especially the parents. If they have their kids in schools like that, I would take my kid out. For the things which are done by them in secret, it is a shame even to speak of. When Kinsey's book Sex Offenders was published in 1965, he defended sexual abuse of children with the words The repulsion with which society views adults who have had sexual contact with young children negates itself when we study the behavior of other mammals. Sexual activity between adults and immature animals is current and seems to be normal from a biological viewpoint. Did we hear correctly? Kinsey saw men merely as another kind of mammal? 
Alfred C. Kinsey placed all of us on the same level as apes, rabbits, dogs and pigs. But in typical empirically scientific manner, Kinsey took it a step further and proclaimed that all sexual violence is a part of normal mammal behavior. The logical conclusion, if the parents wouldn't step in, so Kinsey says, young girls and women would see rape as a nice experience. Dr. Judith Reisman emphasized in her Kinsey studies that his extreme belittlement of sexual abuse even had an impact on American legislature. For instance, redefining rape and lessening the sentence. Kinsey even made fun of the FBI when they warned of a rise in sexual offenses in 1950. He belittled the disgusting crimes against children and boldly published that the much greater damage was done by the adults' hysterics. It's difficult to understand why a child should be disturbed at having its genitalia touched, or disturbed at even more specific sexual contexts, except for its cultural conditioning. Alfred C. Kinsey's primarily sexual attraction to children showed itself clearly in the 1,888 sexual case studies of boys between the age of five months and post-pubescence, as well as 147 girls between 2 and 15 years old. Baseline for the test, the boys and girls were sexually stimulated or stimulated themselves with pedophilic observers measured with a stopwatch the length of time until reaching an orgasm. Of course, Kinsey denied having conducted these tests himself, but this claim releases him from guilt about as much as someone who doesn't exactly murder, but sends a hitman to do the job. A BBC documentary from August 10, 1998, inspected Kinsey's case. The report of an older lady, merely called Esther, was very persuasive. I was just a young girl. Kinsey came to my parents' house. I was molested by my father and grandfather. My sexual behavior was timed with a stopwatch and filmed. They sent it all to Kinsey. I I never got over it. A team member, Paul Gebhardt, admitted in an interview in 1992 that the Kinsey team recruited pedophiles for getting scientific data on supposedly normal child sex. He stated, we asked them, meaning the child molesters, to make observations, take notes, and, if possible, to measure the time and report back to us. Judith Reisman's studies show that children were molested over the course of months and years while their tormentors passed the records on to Kinsey as scientific data. Kinsey supposedly received the most data of the sexual behavior of children from Mr. Green, a serial rapist, from whose experience also stems the six types of orgasms of infants and young boys. Kinsey is reported to have had connections to all kinds of pedophiliac organizations, as well as to child molesting teachers, pedophiliac fathers and mothers inside and outside the USA. Do you have any more details about that? Oh yes. From 1936 until 1956, Kinsey is proven to have had periodic mail correspondence with Friedrich von Balusek a pedophiliac religion teacher of the Evangelical Church in Brandenburg, Germany. In 1957, he stood before court in Berlin for charges of child abuse in numerous counts, one of them being his 11-year-old daughter, 
as well as the possible murder of a 10-year-old girl. The FBI contacted Interpol once they found out that von Balasek had sent detailed data of his sexual encounters with girls and boys between the ages of 9 and 14 to Kinsey over the course of 20 years. But Kinsey refused to hand over the sex diary under the pretense that he didn't want to harm the good name of the pedophiliac criminals. When the Chief Justice made the accusation that von Balusek abused children in order to impress Kinsey, he retorted, Kinsey asked me to do it himself. The German paper Die Berliner Morgenpost wrote on May 16, 1957 on page 3, Kinsey should have pressed charges against Balusek. Almost all of today's sex education programs base themselves directly or indirectly on Kinsey. It's time for society to finally say goodbye to Kinsey and his criminal foundation research and turn towards the abused victims instead of the perpetrators driven by their carnal instincts. What Alfred C. Kinsey saw as normal child sex was in reality nothing other than the sexual torture of children. Kinsey had a passionate and perverted interest in the ability to organism, especially in underage persons, meaning prepubescent boys without ejaculation. And as a result of Judith Reisman's research, a staggering documentary called The Children of Table 34 was created, revealing the most gruesome details for the safety of the child victims of that infamous Table 34. The demonic Table 34 was compiled in closest cooperation with Mr. Green, who the BBC team revealed as the Rex King, a serial rapist who had sexually abused more than 800 boys and girls. In it, Kinsey listed the orgasm ability of no less than 370 male infants and children. Thirty-two percent of children ages two to twelve months, so at least about 270 to 300 infants are supposed to have climax, so states Kinsey. And the more incredible, Kinsey complained in the same breath that there were scores of pre-adolescent, prepubescent children who did not climax, even under persistent, different and repeated stimulation. Such results can only be retained by massive human rights violation in the form of sexual assault. But this was only the beginning. Kinsey and his observers, meaning the child molesters, were on the lookout for multiple organisms. This is how we find children between the ages of 5 months and 14 years who were observed over a period of 24 hours. This way, 11-month-old infants were forced to have no less than 14 orgasms in 38 minutes and 2-year-old toddlers to have 7 organisms in 9 minutes. In the face of this perverse child torture, and even in the name of foundational research, one can only hold their eyes and ears closed and finally call for justice. Why were these perpetrators never punished for this most criminal pedophilia? These are the works and the fruit of the fathers of all those sex educators who precisely at this time want to force a worldwide early sexualization of our children and youth. They follow in the footsteps of pedophilic con men of the highest degree. Every tree becomes like its seed, and therefore early sexualization will get out of hand worldwide if it is not slowed down and stopped in all finality. If we don't succeed in nipping every early sexualization effort and mandatory sex education in the bud, then the latter will be worse than the former. But whoever thinks that this dark prognosis is exaggerated must realize that Kinsey and his co-workers weren't in the least content with the results as is, therefore stating, it is certain that a higher proportion of the boys could have had multiple orgasms if the situation had offered. 
after forcing a 4-year-old and a 13-year-old to climax 26 times in 24 hours. The Kinsey report states dissatisfied. Even the youngest males, as young as 5 months in age, are capable of such repeated reactions. Still more might have been possible in the same period of time. Gewesen. A neutral scientific study proved a long time ago that exaggerated sexuality sooner or later leads to dangerous softening of the brain and nerve damage. Dr. Hirsch, what may happen in a not yet fully developed body or in the soul of a child that is abused in such a dramatic way? I know of a more recent scientific publication by Professor Dr. Rem Schmidt of the Pediatric Psychiatry Clinic at the Philips University in Marburg, Germany, which was in the German Medical Journal on April 29, 2011. Professor Rem Schmidt notes that already general psychical and psychological abuse, let alone sexual molestation during childhood years, always I repeat, always leaves traces behind itself in the child's brain. This isn't only seen in examinations of pertinent memory content in persons who were sexually abused, but also in the brain structure and function of the victims. People who experience physical and sexual abuse during their childhood are also more prone to be affected by psychological breakdowns later in life. As for the emotional psychical strain in an early sexualized age child, it is only of greatest importance to know what the child molesters documented during the, let's say, early sexualization attempts, so we don't have to call it rape. They recorded it in Kinsey's list of six orgasm types, of which I will only cite a few excerpts. Type 3. Extreme tension with violent convulsion, often involving the having and jerking of the whole body. The legs often become rigid, muscles of abdomen contracted and hard, shoulders and neck stiff and often bent forward. The breath held and gasping eyes staring or tightly closed. Type 4. Hands grasping, mouth distorted, sometimes with tongue protruding. The whole body or parts of it spasmodically twitching, sometimes uh, synchronously with throbs of violent jerking. Still more violent convulsions of the whole body. Heavy breathing, groaning, sobbing, or more violent cries, sometimes with an abundance of tears, especially among younger children. Type 5. Culminating in extreme trembling, collapse, loss of color, and sometimes fading of subject. Type 6. Pained or frightened at approach of orgasm. Some males suffer excruciating pain and may scream if movement is continued or the penis is even touched. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believes in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. It was all pure child torture. And this is exactly what it will come to worldwide if we let early sexualization pass. Well, pedophilia is still a criminal offense, and it needs to stay that way. It doesn't become time barred. Well, I, I can't picture it. Those people are sick. We really all have to stand up against this, so something happens, so early sexualization can't get a foothold worldwide. 
I don't think that's okay. Something like this shouldn't even happen. I can't even really picture it. If something like this would happen to my kid, then I wouldn't know what to do either. I just can't imagine. It's not okay. But, like I said, people like that belong behind bars immediately, in closed mental institutions, that's it. Well, I can't picture it. Those people are sick. It's horrible that something like this even exists, but they are, I have to say, pigs. I guess I didn't hear correctly. Sexual kinkiness and personal drives being misused for research purposes? That can't be. We need new laws to bring an end to this, this disgusting practice. I think it's terrible. Well, I can hardly imagine my daughter or son being touched or handled by someone like that. And as an infant, no way. It's shocking. Oh my God, that's gross. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. That's just not normal. Kinsey should have used the same enthusiasm to work on tightening laws after finding out what he did. Instead, he misused his research duty. Oh God, they should all go to prison and be shot. No, seriously, a really bad punishment or so, lifetime sentence. So they can't do that anymore, because if they do it once, they'll do it again. This may sound harsh, but I have no sympathy for them whatsoever. They belong locked away forever. If such criminal child molestation is not to spread to worldwide abuse epidemic, there is only one way to help – clarifying opposition. But not by making our children porn competent, but by radical federal protection against every early sexualization attempt. We must note that all of this filth was already systematically filtered into the nations as modern sex education in 1938. Of course, Kinsey never depicted the results of his research as the perverted experiments of a self-professing pedophile. Instead, he sold it as the first scientific proof that children were sexually needy from birth. But it's in our time, right now, that these criminal acts bear fruit in the worldwide call for the right of children to sex experience. Lehrplan 21 is to bring sex education into every Swiss school. As we speak, foundations are being laid and laws put into effect on various levels that make every refusal of the obligatory and comprehensive sex education in school a felony. The coercion of the sex ed program is already formulated in such a way that not even freedom of religion will be accepted as an exemption. No one's argument counts neither ethically moral objections from parents nor the refusal to participate by uninterested children. What kind of spirit is in charge here? And these laws have already come into effect. In 2010, parents in Germany were already thrown in prison for 40 days and faced 1,000 euro fines for refusing to send their children to sex ed. Only the people can stand say no to such sectarian, overly dictatorial force. We say no to mandatory sex ed. We say no to mandatory sex ed and no to comprehensive sex ed in schools. The Swiss nationwide program HIV and sexual transmitted diseases of the BAG wants to ensure comprehensive sexual education. The foundational thesis, the BHS and BAG build a foundation for a lawful mandatory sex education for Swiss citizens. The BAG in Switzerland calls for a comprehensive early sexualization in the name of epidemic prevention. Basel's school law is working towards, as a transition for Lehrplan 21, instituting early sexualization. In the name of child protection and mother counseling, they're pushing early sexualization in info brochures. A mandatory sex education is almost legally passed. It cannot be refused with the argument of religious freedom, surpassed or even criticized. But before these laws are finally passed, we need to ask ourselves ten important questions. Why does the media not criticize Kinsey's human rights violating statements about sexual abuse in the same constant way it usually does even the most harmless sex affair of influential politicians? 
Where are all the sex experts? Was Kinsey not influential enough? Why does the media support Kinsey's child abuse so trivially, making themselves guilty by association per law for the torture of innumerable toddlers and children over the course of years? Why, after Dr. Judith Reisman revealed the facts, was there no public examination of Kinsey's data? Why did the German Federal Center for Health Education still publish Kinsey's data as completely non-critical in a representative brochure? And this, knowing of Reisman's work? Why did the 2005 award-winning Hollywood movie Kinsey, Let's Talk About Sex, make it into German theaters? Which institute presented the award? What was the rating? Why did this film not pass on the previously revealed genuine truth about Kinsey, instead against better judgment portraying Kinsey as the man who finally brought the Western world sexual freedom? Is the seemingly incredible true that even leading educational directors, the most influential politicians and a great portion of the media starring with Hollywood are in the same bed as the sex criminals? Could all the aforementioned person circles withstand thorough investigation for pedophilic acts? Is this a privately organized infiltration of our national representatives, a pointed circumvention of democratic order? Is this all coming from a pseudo-government? The possibility cannot be excluded. For even in the Ukraine, there are constant seminars and conferences being organized for teaching personnel at schools that are being financed by private investors, who are they exactly, especially from Sweden. These aren't being held in public or even in schools, but in rented rooms and hotels by, as they appropriately call them, external specialists. Later on, these studies are systematically taken into account to prove how important and essential it is for children to have sexual experiences as early as possible. A speaker for the Orthodox Church made a statement, they're advancing systematically in order to infiltrate and destroy a nation. If you look a little closer, you see that the drive behind this is a number of gay and lesbian organizations and the like. In Switzerland, it's, among others, the Pink Cross, the Pedophile Friendly Juso, and the Genossen Schweiz. Also, the Lesbian Organization Switzerland, the Gay Unification, as well as sorts of unknown pedophiles working underground. In their positional thesis, they call for the radical furthering of what they call the social liberation, such as follows. The social monikers male and female are to be removed. Sexual orientation and partner terms are to be released of all norms. For instance, relationships with more than two participants. Family will not be based on biological relation but on the social network without norm. For example, a child should also be allowed to have four parents. Whoever investigates Kinsey and his kind more closely will realize that their goals lie in the renaissance and return of the heathen rituals, in heterosexual and homosexual prostitution, in pornography among adults, among children and among each other, and much more. Well, what can we do? When will we really take these people out of traffic? With the internet, it's nowadays really easy to persuade people. And all the stuff that's posted there, I think it's downright croggy that they don't follow up on that more rigorously. It's an easy thing to close or block these websites. I would go on the streets and collect signatures and do interviews and just do something about it. I wouldn't want that for my child. Yeah, I think they have to do something about this early on and not when it's already too late. All the sexual advertising should be banned as well, like the smoking ban. I would stand up and make sure that people know what's going on. Use a little more sanity. 
such a stupidity coming from the USA. It's uh, not always good. You see what happens. And we really have to watch out for the kids. The state doesn't do much about that. They say, okay, have kids, but they don't really help at all, you know? They think it's okay that you have to watch out more for the child molesters and such. Yourself, the people should watch out too. As a dad, I'm already worried that if I send my kid to kindergarten, something will not happen to him. I have to make sure what kind of people even work there, what kind of people there are. The state needs to watch out for that as well. Healthy common sense. The parents have to watch out for their kids. I don't need any studies for that. I don't need anything. Well, first off, we need to enlighten people. I don't think anyone knows about this. For instance, showing it in the news or maybe making a documentary. When will society finally say goodbye to Kinsey and his human rights violating research and turn towards the abused victims? These were a few short insights into the life of the main puppeteer of a quickly nearing mandatory sexual education. I want to thank my studio guests for their cooperation and you, dear viewers, for watching and your future help. Resistance is mandatory for those who love children and mankind.